where I do got to smoke <laughs> is for people who are playing, playing advocacy. Yeah, or, the advocate, so, like they're pretending. So you, so you want to, you want to open up the space, but you don't have the range to talk about black trans issues, it, or you don't have like who's you leading and talking? What's going on? Like, so I definitely have the smoke for those who think that what they're doing something because I'm right. going to come up in the space and show you mm -hmm. you're not really doing what you think you're doing. <laughs> hey, community, a bitch is back. I'm still here. What's brewing, girl? Yes, I love that. <laughs> One take. One take. A bitch is back. She's still that here. Was perfect. Uh, <laughs> that's some shit we would have said. <laughs> Angelica Ross is back, bitch. Curiosity with Angelica. So get your cups ready for Minority Report. Question for you, because like politics is going to be, at least to me from the outside point of view, <clears throat> very similar to Hollywood and L.A. and all that. That's why I feel prepared. Uh, then, whoop, <laughs> there we go. That's the answer. I said, listen. That's all I needed. All I, I'm telling you. <laughs> let me stop I, you right there. Let me stop you right there. <laughs> I'm telling you, I said to myself, if I must, if yeah. I must show up, <clears throat> if I must do this, then I got to be real. I mm. got to be real. So the thing is, is being in Hollywood, I had to not say things. I had to move certain ways. I, and while also still saying the thing and not giving a fuck. You understand what I'm saying? So how am I still <laughs> saying things but not really getting right there? Because that's what yeah. the business is. How the fuck is Russell Simmons going back and forth out the U.S.? Oh, well. That part. That so part, what I'm saying is, kind of what answer. I'm saying is, <laughs> what I'm saying is, folks want to get upset about, let's say the Asian show beef, you know. And again, I'm you stepping, but I'm doing this for a greater purpose of saying that you have a show where a rapist is on the show, and somebody who is a self-proclaimed rapist who had, uh, you know, uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, celebrated raping some black woman, blah, blah blah, and you want to get upset because of the Asian folks on the show who are acting on the show with that person and still trying to promote the show and do whatever. And it's like, baby, y'all don't still don't get it. They're all fucking employees. You don't get it. So you get a Asian show, you get a black show and everybody black on the show, everybody Asian, they're all the minorities like, well, damn, we got one. We got one. And mm -hmm. I want to hold on to this one. I want to work. I want to do the thing. So, it ain't just that one show. Do you know how many shows are looking the other way because somebody problematic is on the roster? Girl, be serious. So y'all not really, y'all not really serious enough for me with this conversation. So let me get into a different space where I can get a little bit more real about the conversation. And then we're going to talk restorative justice because I'm an abolitionist. I don't want to see people prison. You understand what I'm saying? But mm -hmm. while the system is still in play, I know some white people you can go arrest right now, right now. You understand what I'm yeah. saying? <laughs> I got a list too. <laughs> while, yeah, we at it. While, while we at it. But in the Look. meantime, send your nominations, I, send your nominations to <laughs> AYA. <laughs> but in the meantime, I want to approach it with restorative justice to say if there are men who grew up in a time where they were groomed, you want to talk about grooming? Yeah. Yeah. Men were groomed to be predatory, groomed mm -hmm. to be abusive and oppressive and all these different things. Now realizing that that shit just don't fly and women actually have a fucking choice to not deal with it. In those cases, there is retribution res re uh, and restorative justice for everyone. So mm -hmm. instead of sending black men to prison, no, no, no. Let me tell you, I know y'all want to call it cancel culture because what you're really running away from is accountability. It's accountability. Yep, that That's all we want. That's all we want is accountability. So Russell Simmons and anybody else who's celebrating 50 years of hip hop and not telling the full fucking story of how you got over 
and were abusing women and doing all kinds of things to get to the place that you got to. Some women's blood, sweat, and literal fucking tears paved the path, paved the path to your Grammys and to all kinds of things. I need you to restore those women. I need you to restore black women as a community and put money into the organizations that are feeding black women and children that are putting into them what black men have taken away from that table. You understand what I'm saying? So that I don't got to be jail time, but baby, you got enough to be in Bali. You got enough to pay some um, retribution. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I hear that. 100%. Word. Yep. Drop a gems tonight. <laughs> when to know that you are starting the path of, of politics, because I follow a lot of your conversations that you've had doing your activism work. And I've always appreciate just like the honesty. And I love how you like to like, you have this way of saying something, but at the same time you're reading them, but you don't <laughs> elevate. And I've seen you plenty of times in the camera and you do this thing where you just kind of like your posture just that kind of stands up right, right. to your center. Yeah. And you know it's a reading moment, and I absolutely love it. And I and I love. I call it the that. Felicia Rashad. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's it. no, it's it's the Phyllis Stickney. Do you know Phyllis Stickney? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Phyllis Bond Stickney. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. But 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 you're right in the sense of especially that we need this level of representation and this and honestly this this level of truth at that level because the only way we're going to see these changes is where it matters the most. And it's when it comes to our legal system, like until these laws are changed, we go, we're going to be doing the same shit every day as groundhog day until we start getting the people who are, who are walking in their truth and their purpose, who is going to answer that call and to be like, you know what? I'm going to get in the ring. I'm getting with these ring with but people I, who don't care about me in I the way that I care about myself. But I think it's also teaching people to live above the law. And 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 I know that's going to, you know, listen, <laughs> no one's above the law. But what I mean right. by that is that who needs a law to tell you to be humane? Right. Who needs right. a law to tell you to not kill? Mm -hmm. Who needs a law to tell you to not steal? Meaning, sure, there's laws. You understand what I'm saying? But like. First of all, kind of like duh. That's the given. Like that's the that's, duh, the, yeah. that's the given. So it's kind of like you. Ha we have to get a place where we live in community, in a space. Mm -hmm. So you know, Peter Block uh, wrote this book called Community, and in the book he says that the admission price for community, uh, uh, he says yes, the admission price for community is accountability, mm -hmm. and so we have to be responsible. And I always I, I was say, telling this to other folks, too. Uh, I have a lot of my talking points for when I especially when I go into politics, because it comes from my Buddhist and uh, my faith background. And so we I, we learn things like responsibility as the ability to respond. respond. And so mm -hmm. what we need to do as a culture, as community, is we got to get better at how we respond to our children when they come to us and tell us that someone has hurt them. Mm -hmm. We have to have a better response to our children when they come and tell us that who they are and not and, and, and make sure that we have a great response that shows them an unconditional love. We have to be a society that responds to mental health challenges with the right kind of care and not with police brutality and violence. So what we have to do, what I'm calling on people to do is to yeah. step up above what is written as a law and to now move into a place of sort of like radical responsibility. And it's about being able to re you, 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 and you, myself, everybody, no one gets to stick their head in the sand and wait for the tide to pass. Mm. We, we all have to develop the muscle of being able to respond to the challenges in our life. I talk about this. This is one of the main ways that I talk about this is, when you're weak in the beginning of life, you run away from challenges. You're scared of life. Then you get to a point, I got to a place where at least I was like, okay, this shit is scary, but I'm here and my eyes are open and I'm standing right here and this shit hurts and it don't feel great, but I'm here. 
And then I get to a place where I'm like, oh, shit, this is easy. And I'm overcoming the challenge. And then mm -hmm. I get to a place where I'm kind of bored in life and I'm like, which is annoying for me. And I start making my life a little bit more challenging than it should be and seeking out challenge. But we have got to not let each other off the hook. Mm -hmm. Babe, baby, you need to respond better to life. The morning. Simple things. And this is a practice. The morning. Yeah. People don't even respond well to the morning. Yeah. Yeah. Do you understand what I'm saying is I'm talking mm -hmm. about from small things to responding to the Republican Party, responding to transphobia, responding to homophobia, responding to racism. We can't pretend it doesn't exist. We can't do like some of our parents did and be in denial. We can't mm -hmm. uh, think that respect <clears throat> respectability politics are going to save you. No. We have got to get better as a as a culture at how we respond to the current affairs, and well, that how do you is respond where to people that yeah. don't want to though, like because not a lot of people are open to wanting to be there. A lot of people are, are fine being comfortable. That's like, a good point. What's like what's the almost the response or the rebuttal or the I guess the move for that because it's just like. Yes, there's folks that want to grow and wants to be uncomfortable and things like that, but there's people that are quite content and being fine. And it's just like, and sometimes that's what gets in the way of everyone else's growth and, and uncomfortability. So how do we handle that piece of it? You know, uh, again, so in a in a abstract, big concept way, you know, it's to understand that the ways in which I you know, in, in Buddhism, we have this concept called the 10 worlds um, in a layman's in a layman's term. Uh, we, I can express it as vibrational frequencies, whether your life is vibrating on a high frequency and things are great or whether it's in, in a low, low vibration, low vibrational. <laughs> <laughs> Honey, <laughs> ooh, my refrigerator. Right, ooh, let's find you. Let's home. get you a home. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Like, so, 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 in these situations, the way that you can that I illustrate this for folks is understanding that the way that life works. It's like a science, but the way that life works is you don't get to stay in one state. Mm -hmm. And that that you can work as much as you want. And even as a Buddhist, I work, I chant, I do so much to keep my uh, life vibrating at a high frequency so that I respond to life in such a on a high vibrational tone. But then something like Sandy Hook happens, something like, you know, uh, the uh, mass shooting, somebody died, something happens. And all of a sudden. You find that your energy is plummeting into the world of hell, like you are in a world of suffering and nothing, mm -hmm. not a not a word of comfort or anything can change the way that you might feel. So we have to understand that the comfort that you are holding on to, whether you understand it or not, is very temporary. And yeah. the sooner you get about understanding the temporary nature of things, of all things, the more you'll get prepared to let go and to put yeah. yourself in spaces where you already so that you're not jarred by the experience when it does happen and you're not ready to give up the comfort. So yeah. for those people who are wanting to hold on to their comfort, I, I say I hear you and I understand, but I just want you to mature into a space beyond a child's space of understanding as an adult that things aren't always going to feel good, sweetie. The, and even when you need to work hard and do things, hard work don't always feel good. You know, we can't be here just for the feel good moments. Mm -hmm. Life, mm -hmm. life, life is a mixture of all the things so much so that when you get really good at it, like I've gotten as a Buddhist, we actually know that we're going to travel through these 10 worlds that the state of heaven is a state when everything is just great and wonderful, but we understand that heaven is a place here on earth, but we understand that things can't stay that way. They don't stay that way. So I'm able to go into the world of hell. I'm able to be in such pain and cry with the people and feel it. 
and many times still smile and my smile be the light, the crack of light. Whether it's that's the beautiful. smile that is in, whether it's the smile that's even just internal, you understand it's that it's that I'm not allowing the devastation of the space to completely devastate myself that I'm now, because again, grief and a lot of these things have been understandable for people to completely overwhelm and overtake them. And we allow people that space to be that. But a place of being in a better response, having a better response to these things is allow is knowing how to feel pain and not needing to numb yourself. To mm -hmm. being the strength that someone needs, the strong shoulder that someone needs, to be able to cry with someone and also not be overwhelmed. Like that's the kind of leadership that we need. And we don't have those kind of a we we have some, but we don't have the people who are able to wield all those sides because those who are wielding spirituality are doing so in oppressive ways and are being spiritually abusive with it and are being performative with it. But when I come to, and I'm talking to you from a place that truly speaks to your spirit and gives you hope and encouragement, no matter who you are, where you come from, that's the kind of leader we need to speak to disabled folks and to immigrants and to trans people and to ex people who are identified as ex-cons and people with HIV who feel like there's a decision on their life of what, mm -hmm. what it means. And I'm like, no, baby, actually, no. And I could mm -hmm. show you something different, but in, as long as you're listening to the wavelength that is this other culture, the Shea Room and Zeus and Hollywood, <laughs> on, all these, as Shall long we? as you're yeah. bad, Bad girl, bad girls club, all this stuff that's doing, you know, listen, and I'm here for all of the entertainment. I'm here for all of it. But when but entertainment ain't your, life. your only if that's your only <laughs> entertainment. Can I just can I just acknowledge um a couple things? One, um, I think that we can all agree that um this is a true blessing. Um, not only that you're here and having this conversation, but the subject matter with which we're having this conversation and the light that you are, that's emanating from every single syllable. I wanted to say syllable, <laughs> but, every, <laughs> but every single syllable is resonating in such a powerful way. And I think, um, not I think one of the things that I absolutely know is that it's touching so many people that are listening to this conversation because I, I, it's very easy for people to get um, starry eyed by the celebrity and the, you know, all the, the glitz and the glamour. But one of the things that you've blessed us with in this conversation is reality and grounding us in a real ass conversation. And, and quite frankly, these are the, this is part of the reason why we have this, this podcast is to have perspectives mm -hmm. like this. We can have real ass conversations and yeah, we can kiki key key and kaka and, and, and do everything in between, but we're very intentional about creating space for real conversations to touch people where they are and not try to pretend like, you know, you need to be something different or you have to show up differently, but like recognize that we all are starting from where we are at. So I just want to acknowledge that. Can I say something about what you just said? Because you said, you know, sometimes people get caught off by the glitz and the whatever of celebrity. And one thing that this book here, there's this book uh, called The Heart of the Lotus Sutra. The Lotus Sutra is the base of our uh, Buddhist practice. And one thing that it says in there that has just like completely blessed me is that it says, become a celebrity of the mystic law. And for us, what we understand the mystic law and what we're chanting to, what the mystic law is, is basically an alignment saying that every piece of life has value. Mm -hmm. And to be able to demonstrate yet again, whatever your intersections, abilities, lack or whatever, that your life is valuable. So when you become a celebrity of the mystic law, you are mm -hmm. celebrated far and wide for being the type of person who has shown value, maybe where there are people didn't see it or certain things and you're celebrated for that. So when we talk about celebrity, 
I now embrace my celebrity in the space because I know what I'm celebrated for. Mm -hmm. I know that I'm not just celebrated for this ass and for this beautiful skin. Oh, I'm no, that's also right. <laughs> it's, a, it's, an it's an ass yeah. situation. <laughs> I'm, I'm also celebrated for being a pioneer. You know what I mean? Yes, yes. yes. absolutely. Yeah. Can I ask well, as a follow on to well, that, good. you are getting ready to launch your own podcast. So yes. can you tell us a little bit about what people can expect from the voice of Miss Angelica Ross. Wow. Yeah. I mean, you can definitely expect a lot of this, you know, sort of real talk, but, <laughs> but you know, you know, the, the, what I love about the podcast is called now no opportunity wasted. And I say every episode, you know, it's not just a podcast, it's a movement focused on making the most out of life opportunities and challenges right now today. And it is my preamble to my running for office as well. It is the ways in which I can set the stage and talk about the issues that affect us in ways that sure will eventually get political when I get there. But for now, it's about getting to the heart of the issues and the hum having a very humane um, sort of lens on that. And so the ways that you make things and make it plain for people Mm -hmm. is you take the wow factor and the celebrity factor out of it. So I'm talking to world leaders, celebrities, and everyday people about how they've made the most out of life's opportunities and challenges. So there's, you know, I'm talking with everybody from like Don Richard and, uh, you know, Amber Riley and Marianne Williamson yeah. and, you know, all yeah. kind of folks, you know, to, uh, you know, just everyday folks that people don't know yet. They, their names are not household names, but they found some sort of success in their lives. And then I, you know, there's a couple aspects of the podcast where I drop one of the, I drop Buddhist crumbs. So like the final segment of the podcast is now listen. And, and I sort of give a little final parting word that also encourages people to take action now, today. What can you do today to move one step closer to the ideal life that you want to live? Um, but before that ends, there's a segment called Now You. And this segment is really where I know is going to be a lot of magic because it's basically going to be where I give people the space who need encouraging words because mm. of it, uh, an opportunity that they're faced with or maybe a challenge that they're faced with and they just want encouraging words that they can do it. Yes. Or someone that is calling in and saying, hey, I'm dealing with this challenge and I need advice. What we do and what I'm embracing as a Buddhist in our the as you become senior in sort of the, the, the organization or whatnot, I've been practicing for 13 years. After 13 years of practice, you know stuff, you know, you can quote things, you can pull things or whatever. So we are able to give what we call guidance. Um, so mm. people come to some of the leaders for guidance. And so that is more so what I'm going to call it less than uh, versus advice is just giving some guidance on those things and encouragement so that they understand that it's not about some hero or charismatic person coming into your life to change things. It's about you awakening to the great things that you can actually do for yourself. Period. That's Period. lovely. I love that. Well, before, I, I, I'm so excited for that. Before you Thank get you. out of here, though, we have a segment. Yes. Yeah. Curiosity. <laughs> yes. So oh. We know the, the activists and we know the politician <laughs> and things like that. Yes. But this is how we must want to know like the everyday, the everyday Angelica, you know, and we can't <laughs> have you on here and not give us a story from Pose. So what's your favorite maybe episode of Pose? Maybe outside maybe the candy 70 Mills moment, because that's iconic in itself. But what's maybe a, a, an episode or a moment on that show you're like, damn, that was dope. We did that. Well, I will say this, because, you know, I, I can't really talk about the shows because of the strike. But yeah, what I, I can but what I can say is this. Um, I am very grateful for the opportunity to have my activism meet my creativity mm -hmm. and and to be involved in a project that rippled across the world and had people crying from around the world. Uh, and for me, I prayed. I prayed a lot. I prayed a lot. If I really told people like what really was happening through my years on 
that show, like I prayed a lot. And I, and the, one of the things I prayed for was that my participation would create a ripple effect of change. And so the whole concept of light imitating art and all of that, I knew that this was a moment. And I remember being going to work one day and bringing a list of names of all of the trans women who had passed away that year and read that before we even said action, you know, yeah, and, yeah. and so, so much of what you saw in those moments and scenes had, uh, were grounded in real tears in real yeah. emotions, people we've lost conversations. We didn't get to have with our parents and all of these things. I know the work that I did contributed to a lot of healing and, and a lot of laughter, you know what I mean? Yeah. A yeah. lot of levity. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, that, you know, so one thing that I am so appreciative about the roles I've taken on as an actor is that I get to recognize my multiple personalities that I then have access to and get to understand that the range of emotions is not just limited for me for on screen, but that the rage of a black trans woman, as well as the <clears throat> song of a black trans woman is beautiful. Mm -hmm. And to be able to get people to understand and see that in a way that normal situations haven't been able to convey yeah, yeah, that yeah. That's yeah. where I say we did that. Yeah, and y'all absolutely did. Look, I don't know if you saw, but I'm I got a post. So I'm, a, I'm a fan. I'm a big old fan. Let me tell you, I I got my mom to put on it as well too, and she loved the show as well. She actually bought this shirt for me. That's and amazing. She was, like, she was just like, thank you for sharing this with me and just opening wow. my eyes and and etc. As well too. So, um, I just I I loved it a lot, and your character was was one of the characters that I resonated with. They call me Auntie Henny uh, because I'm known <laughs> to be the crazy one as well too. So of course I was like, well, I I know what character I am as well. But <laughs> it's just I just I just know just you know just when you have your back against the wall and you just in life you you do whatever you need to do to survive right and those are just things that i've had to do as well too and so when you say art you know imitates life and and seeing you bring that through your character i was like i really felt that i absolutely well let, felt let me let me tell you i'm so appreciative of the love thank you so much for not only the love you all have shown me and and showed me but Understanding that whether it's Hollywood or whether it's I'm in politics, understanding that I am encountering a lot of negativity, a lot of mm -hmm. hate, a yeah. lot of things and a lot of lack of support. And so mm -hmm. what's what's really interesting to me is that I really continually have to put up a mirror to people to understand that the way that Hollywood works Hollywood is 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 really playing a game with everybody and and they're playing they're playing you they're playing you mm -hmm. and the ways that they're playing you is number one they're creating content based off the fact that they they always say the American audience is stupid we have to position things this kind of way so number one they're starting off jump with assuming you're stupid number one mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. S secondly the way that we have to understand that, like when I played on shows or whatever, I'm bringing, I'm collaborating. And so a lot of things I didn't get credit for or whatever, where it's like, I improv you know what I mean? Like I brought mm -hmm. a lot of, of, mm -hmm. of those things. I created that they didn't have the words. I had the words, you know? Mm -hmm. So I just think that I totally lost my train of thought. I am so sorry. I no got worries. on the tangent and thought, lost my train of thought. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. <laughs> But, well, no, but just know that you can always come back some, here and we will always love on you. Okay? Here, yes. Thank you. Here. Like, oh, yes. Like, that's, that's, that's basically just what I was saying is that I appreciate the love because, um, you know, I, I what I want to reflect for people is everybody says that they loved candy, you know, um, and 
to say that and know that is to know that she was she was annoying at times, uh, especially with her realness or whatever and pointing things <laughs> out or being loud about certain things or being blunt and what have you. But she always said what the fuck everybody was thinking and blah, 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 what have you. So the ways in which she was treated, not only in her scripted environment, right, um, mm-hmm. as well as on the show as well. There is a sense that p- the audience has to take responsibility for the ways that they did not show Candy love mm-hmm. until it was too late. And I yeah. think that that was a lot of what people felt because they were being very shady. I was watching. I was listening to the comments and everything, you know, with, with Candy. Mm-hmm. It was a fun shade because Candy was funny and did a lot of things, but they didn't show the love that they did uh, until after it was until it was too late. And what I know and recognize about being Angelica Ross is that y'all don't love me like you say you do. Some of you do, some of you do, some of you do. And I am so appreciative of you showing up and showing the love, but I'm out here working my ass off, not only to liberate us and say all the things that need to be said, but also doing a little uh, ditty along with it and doing a song. <laughs> Grand Theft right, right. Grand <laughs> Grand right. Lover and Get Pearl. Little little going up, up, down, 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 left, right, left, left and shit. I'm and giving you something to do that. Up, up, down, down too. All right. So all I'm saying, all I'm saying is, is that if you really love the black trans women, if you really want to be that kind of person that says I support them, then listen to what I'm telling you mm-hmm. and, 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 and support the work, because we know that the work I'm doing is also so definitely supporting a lot of people. How many people you know are running a nonprofit that is specifically giving space and paying people to learn tech skills and uh, get jobs? Everybody ain't doing that. Mm-hmm. So the fact mm-hmm. that that's not even on front street with our community and something that ain't just highly lived, it's, 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 it's fucking me up, uh, to be honest, my brain. Now, mm-hmm. again, again, I've settled with it and all the things and I'm good with, with the way that things are. But what I'm saying is, I have to focus on the love and I do focus on the people who are giving the love and I have to kind of pay it no mind when it comes to the other stuff. Like Marsha P. Johnson would say, pay it no mind. I have to pay it no mind and just understand that those people will become fans eventually. And I just want to quickly share with you too that um, I teach people about tech and about the cloud specifically for free. So if you ever need somebody that wants to come and help, Yes. I would be more than happy to. The Trans Tech what I, Summit is coming up in March. Yes. Okay. That's literally my everyday job is to teach new to the cloud learners about the AWS cloud for absolute free. To anybody well, we have our we cloud. have our Trans Tech Summit once a year. It's around the mar- uh, the Trans Day of Visibility usually. Sometimes mm-hmm. it's like three days. It'll be in person this time in Atlanta. I will definitely be oh, on wonderful. grounds in Atlanta for that. Yeah. And we basically we pay our facility. We always have a corporate sponsor. And we pay the facilitators to actually, so it's always free. There's It don't cost. Mm-hmm. People can uh, attend for free. And we pay the facilitators. It ain't like a big pay, but we do pay them for their time. Um, and then it's so that we can say that it's basically we're teaching each other and we're skill sharing. Queer wow. and trans It's not just a trans mm-hmm. thing. It's the fact that we understand that we need to sometimes move focus to the most marginalized crevices of our community. That's I'm throwing my hat in the ring. If you need anybody boots down on the ground to be there to help and to teach, I would be more than honored and happy. And we got it on the we got it on the podcast. <laughs> so, okay, quick, we'll rattle through these real quick. Snickers or Milky Way? Snickers. Hershey's bar or Twix? Hershey. Skittles hmm. or Starburst? Skittles. Skittles. Mm. Okay. Okay. Wait, I just missed the last one. Was it one more? Oh, yeah, Skittles, oh, Reese's yes. and Kit Kat. Reese's all the way. I love my peanut butter. All day, all day. <laughs> Come on. Okay. <laughs> That's what I love. The year is 1984, and Princess Purple Rain came out, and Tina Turner's Private Dancer came out. Which one you bumping in your car? Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> You ain't right for this question. You is not right for that. (laughs) I'm glad you answered it, not me. (laughs) But it's it's definitely private dancer. Yeah, I'm definitely doing that one. Yeah, uh huh. Yeah, that's 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 that's
<laughs> that's a word <laughs> you know but tina tina is my girl from way back too because she's a buddhist also she's an eastern buddhist uh her whole life and so chanting nam yoho renge kyo You're i right. saw her doing that in the movie and saw yeah. what it did for her focus and for her yeah. to be able to what changed wasn't ike it wasn't that he was still being everybody was still being she changed she shifted yeah, yeah. yeah. stephanie mills or diana ross diana ross Angela Bassett or Viola Davis? That's not, that's rude. That's very rude. Not but... very rude. That's very, very rude. That's, very, that's, very, that's, 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 very rude. that's damn near low vibrational. So is. That's, that's, that's low vibrational. That's, that's hey, Rachel, I know that but... one's that, that one you can't pick. That's a hard one. Yeah, no, that's a very hard one. I mean, but I will say, but Angela Bassett, I, the reason why I will say Angela Bassett is just because, um, the monster of the industry owes her. Um, yeah. She has, she yeah. put a, a lot of heavy work on the table. Yeah. And still does. Let, as, <laughs> that Black Panther, when she did Black Honey? carried the whole movie. She died in the movie, but carried the whole movie. And I love Jamie Lee Curtis. Hear me when I tell you. I Maybe. love, I love I love her. I love her and all the things I've seen her in. Except for the last Halloween movie. That, mm, but I'm but y'all y'all definitely playing well, in everybody's face. <laughs> but that's what I'm saying. Y'all played in yeah. everybody's face to you, give her really that did. over Angela. Like, but yeah. but again, this is how I know. This is how you know that the shit is what it is. Maybe playing. Maybe when playing they game. would sit be when they would sit Beyonce front row multiple times. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hand the camera over to Beyonce because she she's what makes she's the excitement of the whole show. They want to know when I'm it's sorry, Beyonce but I'm sorry, but Beyonce had the best video of all time. And, and the oh, fuck oh, the ladies, like, we don't fuck, you know, wrong. Miss Kaya is like all the way up after that. But he Look. was speaking the truth, he was speaking the absolute. But the I absolute, love that Beyonce, everything, but, we they, were thinking. but they had to get into a space where they had to rise above that. Mm -hmm. And understand that even though they deserve certain recognition, that actually I don't even want to attend no more. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm not even attending the party no more. Y'all might mention my name, but I'm not gonna be there. Yeah, honey, <laughs> honey. All right, we got two more, uh, or maybe three more. Whitney or Mariah? And Whitney. by the way, do you still <laughs> do your impression of Whitney? Because I remember uh, Chicago Pride 2008. I'm just throwing that out. <laughs> Yes, yes, oh my god. Yes, um, so definitely Whitney because of so many reasons. Um, Whitney, I love Mariah down, but Whitney is I uh, just has such a special place in my heart. I don't I haven't done my Whitney impression in a long time, but you I'm gonna tell you what I used to do. I would do the Whitney Houston um because I performed drag in Chicago for a long time. And I would uh in the middle of I will always love you, start lighting up a joint and and like I'm smoking in the middle of the thing. And what I I always did that versus ever doing the crack bit because mm -hmm. I just didn't believe in the humanity of it. I didn't believe yeah. there was a space for her in, uh, uh, for her in that, but the weed thing I could, I could see the humanity in it and, and just yeah. needing to smoke it up sometimes when shit just is what it is, you know? <laughs> so yeah, yeah. I, yeah. Beyonce or Janet. <laughs> Remember what Jarrell was saying earlier about when she reading you without reading you? Love. Right. That, <laughs> that, that question. energy went another rude question. <laughs> <laughs> so low vibrational. <laughs> I know. I know. Next. <laughs> Next. Right. Next. And I love that you entertain, even trying to think about it, was just like, I just, like, damn, I know. <laughs> and every time we ask this question, I flip-flop every single time. And we've asked this question like 20 times. And I'm like, yeah, yeah there's there's oh, no, no way because <laughs> each of those women have such a special place in my heart. For right. I'm, I'm 42. So again, I am a whole Beyonce and also been around for Janet being my bigger sister. You understand what I'm saying? Right. So like- right. Everything from what have you done for me lately to Janet falling in love with my work. And because she's always been 
you know, that part girl. of the community yeah. and that girl. Yeah, that girl. And yep. and so like, you know, she has made her and her teams have made space for me lately in ways that have just been very I've been ushered into her concert, you know, backstage part of her. She had a documentary and I'm on the documentary and they show my name. I'm like, well, I don't know how any of that happened, but thank you. <laughs> yeah. um, and beyond and Beyonce, you know, I've had multiple moments over the years that for me are just special to me um, of, of the ways that I have felt engaged with Beyonce and their team and just her art and all the things or whatever. So, you know, Beyonce also, I'm going to just say this too. Beyonce, uh, hopefully, I don't think this will get me in trouble because the beehive, y'all just bear with me. Uh, just, Cause I'm not, I'm not saying nothing bad. Um, what I'm saying is, is, Beyonce also helped me uh, realize some things. Um, when Beyonce was performing over in Dubai, uh, Beyonce got a low down, nasty check to perform for however bit of time she did. And Beyonce performed every bit of the value of what she was being paid. Like she she did. Beyonce was not over there talking about uh, women's rights. She was not over there. Uh, she was making sure that her show cater to what was going on in that land and nothing was too spicy, you know, whatever the case is. Um, she's not over there talking about LGBTQ rights and blah, blah, blah. You know, even in over here at Renaissance, there's, she's making space, but there's only so much that she's doing. And we see that you're under some saying like there's, she, she, there's, it has a point. And what mm -hmm. I'm realizing that Beyonce knows, cause I had to ask myself, I'm like, what is it about folks here? Like, what is it that they know that I don't know? They have all the power in the world. Beyonce is so powerful. Why wouldn't, wouldn't she do X, Y, and Z? And that's because Beyonce knows that at any moment, they're going to tell her to shut up and sing too. Mm -hmm. They're going to tell you to shut up and dribble, shut up and sing, shut up and act. And especially when you have to cater to mainstream audiences and do certain things in order to, you know, have whatever. Um, and when you are an entertainer who is so great, like Beyonce is. Beyonce is the best, basically, sure. when it comes to like putting on a show currently today. Like she is the best. But when you are have a calling and you have a certain skill that, that you don't that you aren't always going to have all the things. So yeah, Beyonce is not also going to it supersedes her being a world activist and leader. It's not to say that she's not yeah. smart, but it's the thing of like. What your attention, whatever you put your, whatever you put your yes. attention on, focuses and grows, and so that's why she's the best thing because of how much attention. So she's doing what she can from her position to make space and make way. And I think that we mm -hmm. need to get a better vision of things and our community and allow people to be so the stars that they are without needing them to. Solve every the, problem in the fucking world to solve every problem possible. exactly. <laughs> but <laughs> meanwhile, but meanwhile, maybe, we're all sitting in our. Meanwhile, we're all sitting in comfort, not comfort plus. <laughs> <laughs> and, and here's the thing. But here's the thing that I think a lot of people also miss is her being that great opens up the mind of someone else that we don't even know might be the one that solves the mm -hmm. issue that we need solved. And it's that not always just Beyonce. It's just not Oprah. It's just not Angelica. It's not just the okay. aunties. We're able to utilize our ministry and what we're good at right now to inspire someone that is yes. going to solve the issue yes. that we yes. came for see being solved right now. And that's Absolutely. the piece that always bothers me when we put so much weight on so many people. Yes, we can say more. We can always do more. But you don't know what's coming down the pipeline that's going to literally answer the calling that needs to be answered. <laughs> And that that needs to be said. <laughs> and my, so my thing is, you know, so again, that's with Beyonce. Right. Mm -hmm. But then where I do got smoke is <laughs> and I know we got to go because it's been about two hours <laughs> where I do got to smoke is for people who are playing. Playing. Advocacy. Yeah, or, the advocate. So, like they're. So you so you want to you want to open up the space, but you don't have the range to talk about black trans issues it, or you don't have like who is you leading and talking? What's going on? 
Like, so I definitely have the smoke for those who think that what they're doing something, because I'm going right. to come up in the space and show you mm -hmm. you're not really doing what you think you're doing. Right. People who like to pretend they're busy, but they ain't busy. Oh, yeah. The whole word. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <whole> word. <laughs> Y'all, well, this was Angelica, amazing. Thank you so much. We appreciate yeah, you so no, much. Thank you. you genuinely I've, do. Love. Genuinely do. A, come back whenever the fuck you want to. Absolutely. <laughs> we're like, I got something to say. You got a platform to do it on. This going to have to be a part. Y'all going to have to do a part one and a part two of this episode. I was already thinking ahead. I'm like, this might be a part one, part Post, two. So we'll I'm glad you said it. We might need to get the second <laughs> opening for the part two. So we'll be doing that here momentarily. Right, yes. <laughs> I mean, we all know how to find you. But if they don't know how to find you, where to find you and tell again what you your, your upcoming projects and where you're shifting into. Yeah, MissRoss.com, M-I-S-S-R-O-S-S.com is going to be the hub for everything. I'm launching some really big things like coming up, like huge, huge. And so just stay stay tuned. <laughs> Yes. Perfect, perfect. Let us know what we can share. And let us know what we can share and promote as well, too. Absolutely. Because we absolutely or show up. So yes. Yeah, right. You're gonna be let in a place, you, you come into New York, or you're gonna be in Philly, or you're gonna be in Seattle. You let us know, we will show up. And I'll go back I, to Atlanta the heartbeat because I miss it. <laughs> so. We're gonna we're gonna have events in Atlanta and they're gonna be a, a big to-do that people are gonna want to come to. So um perfect, stay perfect. tuned. Yeah, perfect. Well, anything else on your hearts and minds. I no. think I didn't got I think I didn't dumped a lot off my heart. <laughs> <laughs> well, then community continue to wash your hands, your legs, and your ass, and we will see you next week. Love right. you. Bye, y'all. Bye, y'all. <laughs>